morning and welcome to Lucerne Valley Community Church. I'm Pastor Wood. <clears throat> I'd like to talk to the believers this morning, the body of Christ, the great light, the little song that we all know and so familiar with, we've been taught all of our lives, says, I'm going to let my little light shine, but I want you to know that the light in you is not little. The light in you is Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world, and he is a great light. Before we get into it, let's pray. I'd like to pray for us, for myself, and I'd also like to pray for all the pastors in the area, right here in the Lucerne Valley and out there in Hinkley and all around the globe. Let's pray together. The church is a great light. Let's pray that we shine like never before. Father, again, we humbly bow before you. We thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for your patience with us. Lord, we pray for our leadership in our country. We pray that you guide each and every one of them, that you open the eyes that they may see that you are the light of the world. You are our hope. You are the answer to our problems. I pray for all the pastors in the community here and all around the area, out there in Davie, out there in Hinkley, all around the world. I pray for the good shepherds, the good pastors that are doing everything they can to get the word out in these hard times. May the church be awakened to the fact that they are a great light. They're not a little light. Now is not the time to hide. Now is the time to shine like never before. Lord, help us to turn up the wattage. Replace those little tiny refrigerator light bulbs and put some big old searchlights out there. Let us shine like never before. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In Matthew 5, 14, you know the verse very well, following the Beatitudes, let you are the light of the world. Believer, as a believer, I want to talk to you primarily this morning because the world needs your help. The world is in darkness. The world is in fear. The world is in doubt. The world is full of anxiety and everybody's wondering about this and wondering about that and maybe as they should but they don't have the assurance that you have. You have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. He's not a small light. He is the light of the world. He is a great light, and you represent him. The light that shines from you out into this world in this troubled time is the light of Jesus Christ. Open up the windows of your heart. Let that light shine. Turn up the wattage. Shine like never before. The verse says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You're not hidden. People are looking to you for answers. You have the answer. His name is Jesus. Let him shine. You know, they light a lamp and put it under a basket. Put on a lampstand and it gives light to all that are in the house. When I look at that verse, I think about what an opportunity we have now to speak to our families as fathers. You're home from work, many of you. Speak to your families about God. Gather them around. Have a little family Bible study. You and mama, pray together. You, mama, and the children, pray together. Talk to them about the Lord. Let your light shine like never before. Teach them what a wonderful place to start right there in your house right there in your home. If you are fortunate enough to be working, take that light to work. Let your light shine. Show your buddies, your friends at work that, hey, there's an answer to all of this. And his name is Jesus. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in doubt. You don't have to live in anxiety. Jesus is the answer. Come to the Lord. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and that your good works might glorify your Father which is in heaven. Your good works, what an opportunity to do things for other people. You have time now, perhaps, that you haven't had before. Share yourself the best you can. Help their elderly. If you know people need to be contacted, call them up. Social media, we're all learning. Some of us are learning the hard way about social media right now. 
Use it for the glory of God. Use the tools that God has given us. You here in this little community, this church in particular, you have been shined as a little light. You have shined in a great light, and I'm so proud of you in the community. Your love and care for one another, your willingness and eagerness to witness and share others, bear Christ with others. The food program, fantastic. You're doing great, but don't stop. Don't be bound by fear. Call one another up. Text one another. Share your love and concern with one another. Keep up the good work. The light has been sent into the darkness. That's our calling. God has sent us into the darkness. Look at John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was, listen to the word, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Wow, what a remarkable verse. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The world does not understand God. In fact, the world doesn't want anything to do with God because it's darkness. Darkness and light have nothing in common. The light dispels the darkness. And the world is lover of darkness, and they need to see the light. Are they seeing it in you? John 3, 19 says, And this is the com condemnation that the light has come into the world. And man loved darkness rather than light because his deeds are evil. He doesn't want to be seen in the light. But you are the light. And when you come around, you dispel the darkness. Amazing. And for everyone practicing evil, hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light. Now's the time to be fruitful. Our world is in need of real help, honest help. Not doubt, fear, anxiety. Sure, we should be cautious. Absolutely, obey the laws of our land. All those things, yes. But you're the light. You have hope. You have the answer. His name is Jesus. Let people know they don't have to be afraid. That he who does the truth comes to the light. That he may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Romans 3, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But thank God it doesn't end there. But the gift of God is eternal life. You see, you have light and you have darkness. The wages of sin, doubt, fear, anxiety, all those depression, all those darkness, all that darkness, all that gloom, all that doom. But the verse doesn't stop there. But the gift of God is eternal life. It's light. It's light in Jesus. There's a contrast. There's a story told in the Old Testament about they God, the God of the Philistines. And they had captured the Ark of the Covenant from the Israels. And they take the Ark of the Covenant and they put it in the same temple with Dagon, their God. When they came the next morning to see what happened, Dagon was on his face, had fallen down on his face before the Ark of the Covenant. You see, God doesn't share his space. The light doesn't share space with darkness. The light dispels the darkness. But man, in his brilliance, takes Dagon and props him back up. Isn't it amazing that we take the things that God knocks down and we build them back up? We try to, as it were, lift them over our own God. They prop him back up. 
and God says, okay, that's the way you want to be. Check it out tomorrow. They come back the next day and they find they got now in pieces. They can't fix it. God will not share his light with the darkness. Don't compromise your stand. Don't compromise your relationship with Jesus Christ for anybody. I don't bow to an elephant. I don't bow to a donkey. I bow to a lamb. His name is Jesus. And he paid the price for my sin. The answer is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have light of life. John 1, 4 says, in him was life, and the life was the light of man. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, for it is the God, it is God who commanded light to shine out of the darkness. You see, we were lost in our sins and our trespasses. We were dead without hope, but Jesus came and brought us life. We were dead. We were lost. We were darkness, but now he shines through us as life and light. But he, but it, for it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The question is, do you see the light? Are you shining as a light? Does the world see you as a light in this time of trouble, in this time of questioning, in this time of searching? I really believe the world is searching. Many in the world now are searching like they've never sought before. God is shaking things up. And people are looking for answers. You have the answer. His name is Jesus. Open up your heart windows and let that shine. Bring Jesus to your friends and dispel the darkness. Bring Jesus to your families. Dispel the darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. Again, Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. You're not a small, insignificant light. You are a great light because you represent Jesus Christ. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But on a lampstand. And it gives light to the whole house. Is that what's happening with your home? So let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. And that your good works may glorify your father. Which is in him. Daniel 12 3 says. Those who are wise shall shine like the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. John 5, 35 says, He was a burning and shining lamp. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. Do you rejoice in his light today? You can all you need to do is ask him to come into your heart. I'm talking primaries of the church this morning. I want to somehow let you know, brand in your heart. Open up your eyes, let you know that you are not an insignificant small light. You are a great light. And you can be a great force of comfort to the world today. Acts 13, 47 says, For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the earth, to the ends of the earth. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the land. Walk as children of the light. Church. Be the light. Shine. The world is in trouble. We can take 
advantage of that. Be the light. Show them the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. Our worship leader, Cal Kenny, does a beautiful little song. And I'm going to ask you to pay attention to this song while he sings it. And consider being the light to your family, to your job. I figure out how to like this branch. Be the light. Pray and worship God. Consider. Consider this song. And God bless you. There's so many cold and lonely souls on the streets tonight. Where is the light? Where is the light? And that lonely prisoner in his cell will toss and turn on the night. Where is the light? Where's the line? I've been sitting here in my easy chair. Could what I just heard be right? I'm in the line. I'm in the line. So I'll get up and go and let my action to show. That Jesus in me makes me try Cause I'm the line I'm the line To that boy That Jesus in me makes it right Cause I'm in the light 